So you're going to hear Grandma Yola Martinat Banker talking about her trip down the Grand Canyon uh, with my mom, Lonnie Yolanda, when she was, let's see, uh, mom was probably about 20-ish or so, so grandma was probably about 40-ish or so, I think. Um, so here she is talking about it. As I imagine, a lot of zigzaggy turns. Oh, that was probably the hardest. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was a... And then, oh, thank God, we finally reached the bottom. And then, to the Havasupi Camp, it was 10 miles. Oh, so they got you down, and then you had to go by the river. 10 miles. We were not by the river yet. No. Oh, we were still on the, on the, uh, 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 desert. But in the, in the, the bottom of at the bottom of the canyon. Okay, so this you looked up at the canyon and it looked pretty far up. <laughs> this was like a little offshoot then of that main right. Grand Canyon. That's right. The, the Colorado River goes through the main Grand Canyon, but not this little offshoot. That's right. Okay. This is the main river. What, what was, you weren't going by a river right now? No. But so we had to get to the river. Yeah. And the city was still not on the river. Mm -hmm. We had to go another three miles to get to the river after you got to have a sippy. Oh. Well, this Indian, I guess the he guide. was a sadist. What's the that? Guide. He just tried to torture us because he <laughs> knew we were very inexperienced and like, apparently he wanted to show up. So he starts his horse in a gallop. Oh no. And of course, we don't know where we're going from being, so we got to follow him. So, 10 miles on a horse galloping that I haven't <laughs> never been on it, you know. And then we finally reached, oh, I can still feel every, even though I was only in my mid-30s. I felt like I was 200 years old. Oh. And we never stopped once. Just never stopped once. You got up for 10 miles. 10 miles with oh. me. Me, what it had never been hardly ever, ever, uh, once or twice on a horse. And that was for about 10 minutes. What did you do? I just hold the reins and make him go. Uh, did, did the, uh, how did you make him go? Up? Did the, he always well, I think the Indian tapped him a little to get oh, yeah. going. The, the guide. <laughs> So finally, which seemed like an eternity, we reached what was their encampment, their summer encampment. This is Havasu. This is Havasu. Or I'm sorry, Havasupi. Havasupi. The Havasupi tribe. So what's Havasupi? That's the name of the Indians. The tribe? Okay. Avenue is a settlement. Oh, okay. And the settlement truly didn't amount to very much. It had one small little store where they sold them. Um, mm, Did you go in that store? Yeah. Um, you know, it was like a convenience store that we have around the gas station now, that type of store. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of the Indians hung out. And so there was like one main little sidewalk. Mm -hmm. or, or it wasn't a sidewalk, it was just dirt. Mm -hmm. Packed hard dirt. With benches, old benches. And these men... Indians were just sitting there. And of course, we were the only two white girls down in this Havasupi. Were there any other whites, period? Nobody was just, just Lonnie and me. All Indians. All Indians. So were the men on the benches, uh, the yeah. ladies, were they smoking or? Um, I don't remember that. Well, they were just talking. Yeah, uh, you know, leering us. <laughs> Uh, and of course I get I got scared by the minute but when I got off the horse I tell you it felt like every bone in my body was broken <laughs> you know you can imagine the exercise and stuff that I had never used those 
muscles and everything, and I could just hardly get off of the horse. And I was so tired. And they led us to our room, which was, um, you can describe it like, oh, hi, only just the bedroom part, only make it about a hundred years old, old, <laughs> very old. So was it wood? Wood. And small? Very small. Two beds. That's all. One long light bulb hanging down in the middle of the room, which was had about a 15 watt bulb in it. It was really dark. Was there a restroom in there? Yes, there was. There was a restroom. There was a, a, a body. And there was one more room like ours, adjacent to ours, together. Mm -hmm. And then we found out later on, and I guess the Indian told us, or somebody told us, that a very famous photographer, and I can't remember his name, was there, a white man, was there to photograph the Havasupi Falls, which are noted for their... Oh, uh, what color was the water? The aqua is a beautiful aquamarine blue. Oh, really yeah. clear, I imagine. You get yeah, very clear. You could see the bottom of You could see the bottom and the color. The color. Because the Colorado River is very muddy and dark and sticky, sticky and gooey and everything else. But this was a little offshoot of the Colorado River, and it was a very, very beautiful setting with the trees overhanging the, the like, uh, the Havasupi Falls. It, 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 made, it made like a little lake, you know. It was a falls and came down, but it wasn't very big. What kind of trees? Well, there were just all kinds of sycamore trees and overhanging and... The Indian little kids had made a rope so that they could swing on the rope and jump into the water. From the from the top of the waterfall? No, 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 just from a tree. Yeah, okay. So so you, you but, but we didn't see that. No. We're still we're, okay. because that's three miles away. All right. Yeah, not yet. Coming soon. Coming soon. But that night, I tell you. I didn't care if the Indians came in and scalped me or ate me or roasted me or whatever they wanted to do to me because I was so tired. Could you eat anything for dinner? Well, I think we went to the little convenience store. I think they had a little gas plate. Uh, what you call it? A hot plate? Hot plate. And we got a, a can of soup and ate a can of soup <laughs> because there was nothing, no no restaurant or anything, you know, food, okay. And I didn't feel much like eating anyway because I was so tired uh -huh. because the bed looked like a million dollar bed because I was just wanted to lay horse on it. <laughs> but pretty soon we heard, These are the Native American Havasupi tribe, I think. They were little, little children on. They were all close to where you were sleeping. Oh, yes, they were all around us. And 
they were just sleeping outside. Yeah. Like with blankets. And so the open, right? Well, wait, let me finish this. And so about, uh, I'm not sure about the time, but maybe it was around 8 o'clock. We look at this light bulb, and it just getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, and then pretty soon it was dark. And they did that on purpose. They did that on purpose because they had no electricity, and they had an electric um, generator. And at 8 o'clock, they shut the generator down mm -hmm. so there was no more electricity. So I'm not sure what we did. We just kind of crawled into our bed. Mm -hmm. And Lonnie had a date with the same Indian for the next morning to ride her horse again to go inland uh, to go to so she could see the, what are you doing nothing so she could see the Colorado River because she wanted to see the Colorado River up close okay so you you didn't see the Colorado River but you saw how the soup I saw how the yeah how the soup was just a little ways from there. But I stopped there because I could not go anymore. I absolutely couldn't go anymore because it was just, I was just too sore. Okay. But uh, then, by now, we had heard that this white photographer was next door in the room next to us. So we felt a little bit more comfortable because we thought, well, maybe he'll watch and see that they don't scalp us. And so, uh, so after the coyotes, what did you hear? Like, did you know there were Indians outside? Did they make Oh, noise? yeah, they were all over the place. <laughs> did they make any noise? No, no, they were very quiet. And um, did you know that they were going to be sleeping outside? Or Well, yeah, we, when we entered the town, we saw these little cabins, but the government had made these little cabins for them to live in, but they did not like the little cabins. They wanted to live outside, and they put their animals, cows and goats, in the cabins, which was a little strange. But the little kids were so cute. The little, they were just little pudgy little things. Yeah, but they were just filthy. They just had this, the, the ground by now was like silt. Just um, a little reddish tint. Yeah, a little reddish tint, uh-huh. And it was, they, 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 they were just covered with, I guess they took a bath in, the, in this silt. Chinchillas did. And what's a chinchilla? Oh, that's another story. Is it a little animal? It's a little animal. Oh. They make chinchilla coats out of them. Okay. Very expensive. And they lived around the. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Well, we, we, we tried to raise them. Well, that's another. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, one time. Um, uh, Grandpa Bob and uh, Grandma Yola um, raised these little critters, you know, the chinchillas, or they tried to raise them. I don't think it worked out. So that was a little strange, too. We thought, well, why aren't they living in their house rather than to live outside? But they didn't like it inside. They wanted to be out. And they had their cooking outside, and they did all that outside. So you saw them cooking. Yeah. Were they cooking with a, a big open fire? Open fire. So there was probably a lot of open fire smoke. Yes, smoke, yes. smoke and everything. Did you, did you see what they might be cooking? No. Uh, I oh. didn't. I didn't really look. I didn't. I didn't. I really didn't. You know, uh -huh. probably all their own Indian food. <laughs> so anyhow, so the next morning the guide comes and Lonnie's all ready. <laughs> Did you hear any more funny noises? Anything? Well, besides the coyotes and 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 dark, and it, it naturally when there's no light and you're down in the canyon, <laughs> it's really dark. Let me tell you, <laughs> it's it's.
black. There is absolutely no way to get down to the Havasupi camp settlement unless you fly down there with a helicopter or you walk or you take a mule or you take a horse. That's the only way. And the meal is the only place in the United States where the meal has to be delivered by horse or mule. And, um, Did they have a post office? Or? Uh, yes, they had. They, it was in the store. And I don't know if it was once a week they picked up the mail. I'm not sure. So then we saw the falls. And I will say that it was worth the whole trip just to see the falls because they were really, really beautiful. The, the water, you have never seen such crystal clear water. It was just beautiful. Was there any little fishies in the lake? Or? I didn't see any in fishies. But you no. could see the, the bottom. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. White sand? Uh-huh. And um, we could watch the kids swinging, and then, you know, they had so much fun. Dropping into the water. Swinging from the tree into the water with the rope. All very uh, big, like long, like. Uh, so they, were, high. they were quite high. They were quite high. And then when they dropped into that water with the rocks of the cellulite, they turned blue. Mm -hmm. Aquamarine blue. But, uh, only God could paint that color. It was so beautiful. But all of the water you saw in they that did. one area was in that, Exactly. Exactly. Not like you saw it muddy and then it turned. No, no, no. But Lonnie decided she wanted to go on and she wanted to say that she saw the Colorado River. And I said to her, I'll wait here. I was not going to take any more three mile ride because I think you had to if I'm not mistaken, I think you had to walk. And it was quite, uh, she told me later that the path and everything was quite narrow and quite slippery and everything else. To be able to be at a point where you could see the Colorado River. And I thought, oh my God, I must be crazy letting her go off with that Indian by herself. But... I just couldn't make it. I was just so, still so tired from from the night, be from the day before. I felt a yeah. little, yeah, I felt a little bit better, but still not enough to walk. So I think you had to walk. I don't think you could take it to your, uh, your horse. So I watched the kids, and then she finally came back. And she described to me how beautiful it was. And, and in the meantime, a little bit scary because the, the path was very slippery with moss. You know how it is, moss and water, slippery. The path where she was. Yeah, to see the river, but she did see the river. And so then it was time to get back on the horse and go back to our settlement, or go back to our room. And so the next day, we just kind of explored the town. It wasn't really much of a town, but we saw the Indians where they lived outside. The little children, I don't know where they, or if they took a bath ever, but they were brown as little Indians. <laughs> they were cute little things. Probably looked a lot like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were darker than you. Yeah. Well, I think that the. Well, anyhow. <laughs> I can get pretty dark. <laughs> well, they can. They, yeah, you know, the sun was reflecting down there. It was a little bit warm. What time of the year did you go? It was sometime in it. I believe it was summer. As long as he was out of school. It's summer? It's boiling in the Grand Canyon, isn't it? Yeah, it was pretty hot. It was pretty hot in there. Well, maybe it was just a little before summer. Oh, yeah. I don't remember. I remember the weather being nice. Okay. We'll make it.
night, and um, then it was time to come back home again. And I thought, oh my God, we gotta go up that uh, horse again. <laughs> In the meantime, we saw another white lady, and she introduced in town, and we and she introduced herself as the visiting nurse. She she was hired by the county to try to help the Indians and their if there were any problems physically, you know, like if they had broken a finger or whatever, uh, you know, they were to uh, he, he, he was to attend them. And she says, oh, she says, it's a good thing you were in town last night because one of the Indians had passed away and they had like a However, they celebrate the death of a, one of their own, they get really high on whiskey or whatever they, is, whatever they drink. Something made out of cactus, I think. I don't know. And she said, you have to be very careful because they are not noted to be able to hold their liquor. <laughs> Did anything happen with anybody at night or anything? Not that, you know, we were so dead to the world and they were probably inland a little, maybe they were, you know, a little bit away from the town. I don't know. But I mean, did the nurse say anything? No, 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 no. Did you wear in case it happens again? Yeah, she said it's just a good thing you were, um, you know, you didn't know about it. <laughs> Where were you? Because you were late. Oh, okay. We didn't know a thing about it. No, we didn't hear anything. We were dead to the world. And but, she, but she said they were kind of making lots of noises, right? Well, yeah, they were whooping it up. Yeah, but when, you know, they were mourning the dead and yeah, making that one. And making noises. Yeah. So maybe I'll, I'll say that you heard these noises. I don't know, maybe, but we were too tired to hear anything. Yeah, but that would be good. <laughs> Go ahead, you can make it some noise. And she said, now, tomorrow morning, they are going to carry the dead person up to the mesa, mm -hmm. because he will be buried up on the mesa. Mm -hmm. And so he had to be carried by, you know how they put two sticks like that yeah. with the horse? I don't know what you call that. With two horses or one horse? One horse. One horse and two sticks. One horse and then like a frame. Where the oh, God. so um, like you have each piece of wood, uh, each each like wooden piece. One is on the horse and one's on the ground. One's That's on right. the horse and one's on the That's ground. right. And so, you stretch across. Yeah. Like so the Indian's feet yeah. are almost tag you know on the ground. Oh, yeah, yeah. Heads up by the horse and yeah. Feet, so. Let me probably put a little something so he's not dragging his feet, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. So, of course, we saw that. Oh, and you saw them going up? Oh, yeah, because we were following them. Or we were, we, yeah, we all, the trail, we all, the nurse was there, the dead man, and our guide. Mm -hmm. And I don't Somebody know. Somebody was pulling the dead man. Oh, yeah, and, and another person pulling. So there was like a little, and he was four, four or five people going up the plane. So this time, uh, did the dead man have like a feather in his hair or something? I mean, oh, what? Did the dead man, Indian have a feather in his hair? No, no, he, he was wrapped up. Wrapped up. Uh-huh. Like you couldn't see any like part a, of Like a mummy. That's oh, right. My goodness. Like a mummy. You couldn't see any part. He wasn't dressed. He, he didn't know he could just see. No, no, he was dressed like a mummy. Okay. And then maybe a blanket over that. I don't, I don't quite remember. And um, so this time, they did not go so fast because they had to carry the body. The body. So we went a little slower, so it was a little bit easier. 
although going up was more difficult than going down. Really? Because you kept falling backwards, you know, you had to hold on real tight. Oh, I see. And, uh, yeah, and, and the horses did not come any more sure-footed. They still sunk down two or three mm -hmm. inches every step that they made. And I thought, oh, my God, we're going over the cliff for sure. And then we finally made it to the top, which, of course, I was delighted to see. <laughs> and then we uh, gave the guide his fee, which, of course, now I don't remember how much it was, but, you know, and thanked him and everything. And uh, I am not sure what happened to the body, but... From then on, I, I don't remember. <laughs> but uh, then we got, and our car was still there, which I was very grateful for because there wasn't a soul there. <laughs> and, you know, anybody could have taken our car. Not, just not a soul. So it really flat, you could see, you know. Oh, you could see miles. It was just flat. You could just nothing, just absolutely nothing. So then we got on their car, which was still there, thank God. And then we had to ride 60 miles again to the main road. So that 60 miles of complete desolate. Just nothing. And that was a dirt road. The dirt road. Well, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Uh, might have been paved. Mm -hmm. uh, but... You know, I, I'm thinking now, you know, if we'd had had any car trouble, we'd have been in bad way. There was no gas, no gas station, no nothing. The wild, wild west. Oh, yeah, they, you're not kidding. And it's a good thing I was so stupid I didn't think about all these things at the time. <laughs> you probably didn't even have water. And it's in I Yeah, this is just, I mean really stupid, if you ask me. I'd be a little bit more better prepared now if I had to do this over again. <laughs> and then we got on the main highway, which, oh God, it was just like heaven. I thought, oh, from where we'd been, you know. Ah, uh, civilization. Oh, uh, yeah, but it was a great, great experience, and I'll never forget it because, of course, it was a, like you say, it was, uh, you know, probably very much like when our forefathers came. That's what they saw, you know. Did you take any pictures? Would you believe that we took a lot of pictures and somehow the roll, I bungled up the roll, so not one picture came out. Oh, no. <laughs> I was just sick. Oh, yes, I'd be sick too. But you still have the postcard? You sent it to... We sent it something, but I don't know where it is yeah. now. Yeah, you probably sent it to your mom, you thought? Yeah. Yeah, she probably kept it somewhere. I don't yeah. know. I don't... I doubt it. <laughs> but, um... So, that was our experience to have a soupy. It was a wonderful... Uh, there was... We had every emotion you can imagine. Um, and, you know, we did see the, we kept for a long time the magazine that the photographer went down to photograph. I guess he came often to photograph that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, 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 found, we found a magazine and we bought it and we saw his name. He was quite a famous photographer and... Uh, well, yeah, we had every emotion you can imagine on that trip. Anxiety, uh, scared, um, uh, beauty, uh, new experiences, you name it, we saw it. All in, encompassed in about three days. Oh, you only stayed three days? I don't know. Yeah, that's all. It was a very wonderful, memorable trip that uh, I'm sure neither 
one of us will ever forget. Why didn't Grandpa come with you? He's working. Mm. And do you remember on that postcard, did it, uh, like, you know, if I were just looking through a bunch of postcards, you know, did, you, did it look like um, a lake or did it look like the falls? It looked like the falls. I think we send a picture of the falls. Harrisubi Falls is what mm -hmm. it's called? That's what you call it. Okay. I'm sure you can find a magazine with that. I bet you you can find it in your computer.